Hey everyone, welcome to The Daily Word. I'm really glad that you've joined me. And for our Daily Word today, we're in the book of the prophet Zechariah, chapter 5. And what I'd like to do is share verses 5 to 11 with you. And then let's, let's talk just for a few minutes today about the path of life. So if you would, hear the word of the Lord. Then the angel who was talking with me came forward and said, Look up and see what's coming. What is it? I asked. He replied, It is a basket for measuring grain, and it's filled with the sins of everyone throughout the land. Then the heavy lead cover was lifted off the basket, and there was a woman sitting inside it. The angel said, The woman's name is Wickedness. And he pushed her back into the basket and closed the heavy lid. Then I looked up and saw two women flying toward us, gliding on the wind. They had wings like a stork, and they picked up the basket and flew into the sky. Where are they taking the basket? I asked the angel. He replied, To the land of Babylonia, where they will build a temple for the basket. And when the temple is ready, they will set the basket there on its pedestal. Well, friends, first of all, as we're looking at, at chapter 5 of Zechariah, uh, I want to ask you to notice the, the destructive nature of sin. The, the first part of chapter 5 is about the, the curse of sin and how there is, there's destruction because of, uh, because of sin. And, and that is the basic nature of sin, of rebellion against God. It destroys, it does not create, Sin does not heal. Sin does not restore. Sin tears down. The scriptures talk about the the curse of sin, that that as we turn, humankind turn from God in sin, that there was a curse then upon upon us because of sin, but also because on even God's good creation, that that creation itself, uh, Paul talks about, is actually yearning for the coming of full redemption. That, that creation itself has been impacted by the curse of, of sin. There is just this destructive nature. Things are not what they were meant to be. And, and what the Lord says here is that sin is going to be purged from the people of God. And I think here we could ask ourselves, am I, am I allowing God to search me and know me? Am I allowing God to purge the sin out of my life? You see, uh, sin is carried off here. The, the symbolism of this wickedness, the reason that, that the symbolism is a woman, not, uh, let me be clear, <laughs> it's not because women are wicked. That's not, that's not what this is about. The, the symbolism is of a woman because wickedness is actually a feminine word in Hebrew. And so it's symbolized by, by a woman and it's um, contained there in this basket and it's going to be carried off, right? And I, I, I think that the symbol, part of the way God may well speak to us on this, is that this, this symbolizes our yielding to the Holy Spirit. God convicts us of sin. And we yield to that conviction. We don't harden our hearts. We don't grieve the Holy Spirit. But we surrender. We allow the Lord to carry off that sin by His grace to free us from it. Now, sin is carried off to Babylon here where they will, as we see in the Scripture here, they'll not just tolerate it. They'll accept it, and they'll not just accept it, they'll celebrate it, and they'll not just celebrate it, they'll actually venerate it, they will worship it, and, and they will build a temple in order to place it on a pedestal and worship sin. And friends, this is, this is really indicative of the, deceptive, the, the deception of Satan related to sin, the deception, deceptiveness of sin that what we find in sin is that though it may offer a few moments of, of pleasure, some kind of a thrill, that, that actually sin, it, it doesn't satisfy. It doesn't give life. And the lie of Satan is 
even in, in the midst of that, the emptiness of sin, the inability of sin to give us life, there is this insistence, oh, well, you just need to give more of your life to sin. Sin needs to have a, a greater place in your life. Then, then you'd be, you would be satisfied. But sin, like the addiction that it is, sin draws us further and further and further in to the place where, where it defines us. It defines who we are. And, and so you see Babylon, a culture that is going to receive sin and actually going to celebrate sin. And we see what happened to Babylon. It was, it was a, a, a nation that fell. And, and in fact, uh, I think that it, it, it's incumbent upon us to actually pray for our nation because what we've seen over the last couple of decades is not just a tolerance for sin, that's sort of where it started, a tolerance for sin that, that became an acceptance of sin, and it didn't, it didn't actually stop there. The acceptance became celebration, and that celebration, in fact, is in some ways moved to veneration, right? That, that there, there is this tolerate, accept, celebrate, venerate sort of a process. And, and we're to the point now where we see the celebration of, of really the root sin of pride, that pride is celebrated in uh, in our culture, rebellion against God and, and His created order in His Word is celebrated in our culture and, and even venerated. I'm not going to repeat it. I don't even really want you to go and look at it, but I, I recently heard this, this uh, creed that really is venerating sin that was actually done in a so-called church called the Sparkle Creed. And, and this, this is just the, the continued uh, degradation of our culture, of our nation, in sin. So it is incumbent upon us to pray for our nation, to pray for a great awakening, for return to God, and it is our calling to be those who push back with the truth in love, who speak the truth of the gospel, who tell people of the love of God and of the freedom that we can have, not just from the penalty of sin, but because of the cross of Jesus, because of the work of God's grace, that we can actually be free from the power of sin over our lives, that we can live in freedom. We must be those who point to the truth of Scripture because it is the Word of God that is that, that shows us the path of what is life, not the destructive path of sin, but what is life and life to the full in Jesus Christ. And may it be so in His holy name. Amen. Amen. And friends, until we have a chance to speak again, I pray that God would bless you and that He would keep you.